Hello, so in today's video what I'm going to do is teach you how to do the chemistry IA but it's not like what teachers do for you at school. In this video I'm going to give you exact outline how your chemistry is restructuring the niche part, what are the key things you need to remember. Okay, So our team, actually our chemistry team have a lot of IB students for their chemistry IA. Okay, and this this what I'm about to teach you just works. Okay, if you just follow it, you'll get a level seven. Okay, so let us begin. Uh, as you may know, the first part in your eye is always the design, right? It's always the design. So in your design, the first part in your in your design part is what we call the research question. The research question. Okay, so the research question, the most the best kind of research question, if you're writing your design lab, is a cause investigating a causal relationship so for example how does x affect y so that the it should always always look like this how does x affect y and what you need to remember is it needs to be what we call measurable okay like the this is the like this is obviously the independent variable this is the dependent variable the i the dependent variable and the independent variable have to be measurable okay so one example would be this how does molecular mass of straight chain alcohol affect boiling point so you can see it. the independent valuable the molecular mass it is this is measurable boiling point this is also measurable degrees Celsius right so that's it second is your hypothesis so for a hypothesis for um, you need to for this causal relationship you need to state the relationship okay you don't need to state the magnitude of the relationship but you should state the relationship you predict okay so for example how does molecular mass of straight chain affect bottom point so you can say as the molecular mass increase the boiling point should increase okay so um, one thing that's very important is you need to explain the logic explain logic behind hypothesis yeah. so using this as an example how does molecular mass affects the uh, boiling point of, of an alcohol so what you can say is basically as the molecular mass increase, the boiling point is expected to increase. And this is because there's a greater uh, London forces, right? So there are stronger uh, intermolecular forces attracting molecules together. More heat is required to separate the molecules, hence boiling point increase, right? Good. So that's it. Next, you talk about your materials, okay? Materials and apparatus. Apparatus and material. A lot of students put just materials they don't include apparatus so this you're going to get marks taken off if you just put everything everything you use under material what is the difference between material and apparatus Mat apparatus is basically devices or instruments so you can think of it as something that is reusable right material is not reusable so it's just one-off use okay so for example in here, e.g., material would be alcohol. Alcohol would be a material. Apparatus would be something like a beaker. Got it? Okay. Next thing is you set your, you, you uh, depict your variable. Okay. So, first you talk about your um, independent variable. So independent variable is is basically what you what you change, right? The factor you change, okay? So what you need to do is you have to state clearly. Um, there has to be five increments. Okay? So you have to state clearly the five increments will be tested. Okay? So for um, so for example, uh, the uh, molecular mass so it could be like 100 grams 101 gram 102 gram etc right just an example um, always have five increments for your independent variable okay 
for your dependent variable, okay, you want what you want to have is um, you want to clearly explain how to measure. Okay, how do you measure it? So with what instrument, for example, and the more more importantly is if there is a calculation involved, you want to state how to calculate. So you want to state the equation, okay? So one example is um, is uh, enthalpy. So if you are trying to calculate enthalpy, you want to state the enthalpy equation. Does that make sense? And then you have control variable. For control variable, the best way to organize this is by a table, okay? Four columns. First is the variable, the variable that you are controlling, then is the significance. So significance means why you want to control it, okay? And then is the how to control. So what are you going to do in the experiment in order to control it? And lastly is the, um, is the value. Okay, so for example, if you're controlling, let's say the room temperature, so the variable is room temperature significance because room temperature is going to affect blah, 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 how you control it. So you give a way. So for example, you set an air conditioner, something like that. The value, so it's going to be at 25 degrees. Okay? So you're going to have at least three to five control variable, at least three. Okay? Good? So, um, you, uh, in this part, you also want to state that you want to also want to state how your data is recorded. So just say, at the end of this part, just say something like this. The data we recorded in the table is what we call the 5 times 5 table. Okay. So why is this 5 times 5? So you remember just now, we say 5 increments, right? So like A, B, C, D, E, right? 5 increments, 5 trials. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 trials. Okay. Still following? Okay, one more is at the bottom, you want to have mean and standard standard deviation. So here, this stands for five trials, this stands for different increments. So you want to say the tape, your data will be recorded according to this table right here. Okay, just an empty table is fine. You just want to demonstrate to the examiner this is how the data is going to be collected. Okay. So, um... One more thing, one more section a lot of students forget to add is what we call precaution, precautions. Okay, so for example, what, what, like you want to list what things you, have, you want to be cautious about. So flammables is one, toxic. Okay, so for flammable ingredients, you can say do not uh, put on fire. Okay, or for toxic chemicals, you can say use glove to handle. Something like that, right? Good. Okay. For um, method, so for method, I guess you just, I guess some some things you want to be aware of is you need to keep it simple, okay? Just keep it very precise, so make it very easy to follow, right? And um, you want to also want to explain how you're going to process, slightly how you're going to measure the data afterwards, okay? So for the method, there is. It's a relatively easier part, I think. Okay. Your data recording and data data collection and data processing. So for data collection, you want to have two parts, which is qualitative data and quantitative data. For qualitative data, what you need to be aware of is first of all, it has to be point form. It's the best way. Just point form list your quant qualitative observation. Another thing that students often miss out is the timing. So for example, when you say flames, for example, let's let's say you're saying flames evolve, there's fire. You want to state clearly when did the fire evolve, during which step, right? So during the second step of the experiment, when we place this into the beaker, fire evolved. I want to be clear of that. So quantitative, usually a data will be good enough. So as I said just now, you have different, you have different uh, independent variables, right? Different variations of the independent, of the dependent, uh, independent variable. So let's say A, B, C, D, E, different independent variables, and then five trial runs, right? So five by five table. Here you calculate the mean. So you're finding the mean of this A variable. So after five trials, what is the value you get for A? So for example, um, 
let's say A is like ethanol, right? You're trying to try find the boiling point of ethanol. So after five trials, the boiling point of ethanol is this, and then the standard deviation you're gonna put below. Okay. Now let's move straight on to the data processing. Data processing. If you plot a graph, this plotting a graph is very common if you look at the questions that ask about the relationship between two variables, right? But if you plot a graph, these are the five, the four things you need to have. You must have five things, sorry. R, the R squared value, which is how much data is spread from the mean. The error, error bars. So error bars, it must be the error in the error bar is basically this SD, okay? Because in here, the SD is the error when you do five trials. Okay, keep that in mind. A lot of students say, "Well, why isn't it the the instrument, the the uh, error in the instrument or in the beaker or something?" It's because the standard deviation actually reflects this error. Okay, so in a way, you just need to include the SD. The equation of the straight line or the curved line. Excel can do this. Title for your diagram. Units on the x y axis. If you have these five things, it should be good. Okay. Next, if you let's say some. So in some IAs, you're trying to calculate a value. For example, the enthalpy of combustion of eth ethanol. You, you want to compare it with the lit value. Okay? Lit value comparison. So you can find the percentage error from lit value. This is very important for if you, you're trying to find a figure from your experiment. So for, it's basically the uh, your value minus the lit value divided by lit value times 100. Percentage error. Okay? Lastly, if you're if you want if you're calculating a value and you're making calculations in your data processing, you have to consider the uncertainty. Okay, so the basic thing is basically if you're adding numbers, you add the uncertainty. If you are multiplying or dividing numbers, you multiply the uncertainty. Does that make sense? Okay, and um, one more thing is um, uh, one more thing is that if the let's say you, you multiply this uncertainty and you get really you get a lot of decimals, right? So let's say nine 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 something like that. But your uncertainty is only zero point zero one. Um, oh actually the so it's the the figure is our three six six figure, right? Let's say you get nine point nine nine. But your uncertainty is like it's like this. Then you cut your uncertainty, so it becomes 9.99 plus or minus 0 .0, 0 0.01. Okay. So if if your uncertainty value becomes too big, you always trim it down to match this. The decimal place in the in your value must match the decimal place in your uncertainty. Okay. So you trim this down. Okay. Part which is your conclusion and evaluation. So as the name says, you need to have. Uh, you need to have two parts, okay? So first part is the conclusion. So what you need to do is report the result, okay? So it's normally either a value or the relationship, okay? The value or the relationship. So let's say you calculate enthalpy. You can say the, va the enthalpy is da 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 If you're talking about relationship, you say there's a positive relationship. You want to describe the relationship. So say like it can be described by the equation y equals 2x plus 2, something like that, if you're talking about relationship. Okay, then evaluation. What do you need to do for evaluation? Is I think the best way to do it is point form. Okay, so what and you want to talk about all the sources of error. And you want to you. It's better for you to separate into random and uh, systematic error. Okay, so have one part on random error, the second part on systematic error. If you don't know, random error is basically the, the type of error that that increases the spread of your data. So it's, there's no direction, okay? What that means is that this, because of this error, it could lead to either the value being too high or, or the value being too low. So for example, uh, the, the, thermometer, the, thermometer, the thermometer is not accurate. So this would be a random error, okay? Or the wind is causing the temperature to change. This is random. Systematic is, has a direction. So for example, let's say you're, you forgot to rinse the beaker after the experiment, after each trial. So this will lead to an increase in volume for every single trial, right? So this is systematic, okay? You want to talk about the significance. So how does it affect the result? You need to have critical thinking here. How does this error affect the result? And then you want to suggest improvement for next time, okay?
So this is it for the chem video. I know because for the chemistry, I, there's all sorts of experiments being conducted by students. It's very hard to do a one size fit all video. Okay, but I hope this is helpful. If you need help, just click our link to get a free trial lesson. Overseas.vino.hk, you can get a lot of free lessons there. Uh, it will teach you all the exam questions related to a specific topic. Okay, and uh, if you want help, you can also WhatsApp our number, uh, which is stated here. Okay.